So today I'm going to show you how to add a bit more color to your terminal and both of these methods are going to be with programs that you already have installed. So the first one is going to be an arch based one. We're going to be adding some color to Pac-Man and the second one is we're going to be looking at adding color to our man pages through the less term cap variables. So if you're new to the channel you know what to do and let's jump right into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is the Pac-Man one just because it takes like five seconds to set up. So what we're going to be doing is editing our pacman.conf file, which is located in our Etsy directory. So I'm going to be using Vim for this. You can use whatever you want, but also remember to actually open up in sudo. So pacman.conf, and there's just one line we need to edit in this. And then the option we're going to be activating is this color right here. So by default, I believe it's actually in here. It's just commented out. So if we just uncomment that, or if it's missing, obviously write it out yourself. So we save that. And now if we say run... Uh, sudo pacman, if I can spell, dash syu. We'll have a look and we'll see there's a little bit of extra color. Like, there's not much, but you can notice you've got these blue dots here. This is now white instead of the gray that it was before. And the other program this will also affect is programs like Yay. I don't know about any of the other AUR managers. I know that Yay will actually look at this option though. So if we run Yay dash SUA, so that's how to update all of your AUR packages. We run that and we'll see there is considerably more color here. So obviously this isn't too useful. None of this is too useful, but it's nice to have a bit of extra color on your terminal. So I don't, as I said, I don't know about your other AUR managers. Yay does actually acknowledge this option though. So the second thing we're going to be playing around with is the less term cap variable. So this is a little bit more work to go into. So that's why I want to do it second. So what we're going to be doing is having a look at our ZSH emp file or your bash RC file, whatever you've got to actually define your environment variables. I don't know what the other shells actually use. So you're going to have to look into those yourself. So basically what we're going to be doing is setting a couple of environment variables. So there's two ways to do this. One, you can set them with the escape characters. We're not going to do that though, because the documentation on that is questionable at best and missing at worst. Now I'm not sure which it is, but we're not going to worry about that. We're going to do it the easy way. So in here, we have these seven less term cap variables defined. So these aren't the only term cap variables that are available. There's way more than this, but these are the only ones we're going to care about for man pages in particular. So basically what the term cap variables are, we can have a look at the term cap man page here. So the term cap database is an obsolete facility for describing the capabilities of character cell terminals and printers. It is retained only for compatibility with old programs. New programs should use the term info database and associated libraries. So even though it said it's an obsolete facility, the reason we're using this is because the NCurses library, which Les uses, actually has a layer on top of the term cap variables to actually convert them into the newer term info stuff. So if you're interested in actually looking into how the term cap and the term info databases work and then how the NCurses library actually creates a layer between the two, you can feel free to look into that yourself. But I don't think that's really too important for this video. I just want to focus on actually setting the colors and setting the different effects that you can do to the text. So as I mentioned before, we have these seven variables and all of them I'm setting the values in here with tput instead of using the escape sequence. So basically what tput will do is pretty much just output this sequence here. So that just makes it a lot easier to actually set the variables because the tput stuff is actually documented. This is yeah, good luck finding anything on this. You can probably find it somewhere. I guarantee it's in some man page somewhere, but I actually know where to find the tput stuff. So we have these seven variables, as I said. We've got this start blinking one, this start bold, start standout, end standout, start underline, and end bold blinking standout and underline. So there's going to be clearly some way to actually activate these different modes. So you would think that maybe it would be in the man page for tput because that's the program we're actually running right now. So we can look in there and we'll see that it's actually not, which really confused me at the start, but it is documented somewhere. So say we look for bold in here, bold is in there, but what about set AF? And we look for that and that's not in there. Where we actually want to be looking is within the man page for term info. So that's where that comes back into it. It's got a list of every single uh, cap name, which is what these are. So if you have a look at the man page for term info and you search for cap name, you'll eventually find this big table here. So the column that we care about is this column right here that says cap name. This one right next to it is actually the term cap name. So that's what each of these variables are. So if we look for say MB, 
Actually, no, Blink is a good example because I know Blink's going to be easy to show up. So we look for Blink, and as we can see, the cap name for it is Blink, so that's the value we'd put in here, and the actual variable name is MB. So if we look in here, so less term cap underscore MB. So as we can see there, that's the value we need to be setting for the blinking. So what if we want to set this bold text to be blinking? All we have to do is change this bold from bold to be blink. So that is changing it to the blink cap name. So we save that and then we bring up a new terminal so it's just easier to refresh my zsh -enf. and let's just bring up the man page for d menu just because that's a short one so as we can see all of the bold text is now blinking so the only way to work out what each of these bits of text are is actually to test it out yourself so if we just quit that out so it's a bit easier to have a look through it let's just see if we can work out what's what so bring up man d menu and obviously you're not going to have the colors in here so it's going to be a bit harder for you but basically anything that's relatively important that's going to be bold and then any of the values after the options or any of the values after any of the other important stuff is probably going to be set to be underline so that's basically how you're going to look at that and then blinking i'm not sure where blinking's used so Every example I've seen online about setting the values for man pages has included blinking. I don't know if any man pages actually use it, but I've included it just because that's what I've been seeing online. And then we've also got this standout. So standout is this line down here that says the info of the man page and like what page you're on and or not page, what line you're on and a couple of other things like that. And also standout is when you search for something. So we search for D menu. And as we can see, now everything that matches our search is yellow. So let's just go through this before we go on some random other tangent again. Let's just work with bold first up. So we are setting it to bold. So if we look in the man page again, so if we search for bold, bold enters bold mode. Okay, that's fairly simple. So we've got it set to bold and we've got this set AF. So what does set AF do? Search for that. And as we can see, this will set the foreground color. Okay, so what are these colors? now? Luckily for you, I actually found that these are in the actual man page as well. So if we go right down to the bottom, it actually talks about colors. So if you don't know, in your terminal, you have a basic color palette that's defined of 16 colors. So the way that those are numbered is zero is black, one is red, green is two, yellow is three, etc., etc., until you get to white, which is set to seven. And then the light versions of each of those colors will be eight for light black, 9 for light red, 10 for light green, so on and so forth. And then after those are done, I believe you have your foreground and your background color set. But you're probably not going to be setting those because if you set your foreground color, you might as well not be setting the variable because that's the default color. And your background color, you don't want to set because then you won't be able to see the text. But that's not too important. Basically, these are the colors you're going to care about and then the light versions of all the colors. So if we were to write set AF and then we write say 2. So if we look in here, set AF 2 will mean set the foreground color to green. Now how would we set the background color? So luckily we don't have to search for the documentation, it says right here. So set AF we know is setting the foreground color, so we can assume that set AB is setting the background color. So let's just actually have a look at that just in case for whatever reason it might not actually be that. So set AB, set background color to the color or to number one using ANSI escape sequence. So basically set it to whatever color you give it. Okay, so if we write T put set a, B, and let's just go with 4, because I believe 4 is blue? Yeah, anyway. Run the man page, and as we can see, now the background color of that text is set to blue. So that looks pretty bad, but this gets the general idea of the sort of stuff that you can do. So what about some of these other options in here? So the ones we haven't looked at that I currently have in here are RMSO, SGR0, and uh, SMUL. So let's have a look at what SM or RMSO is, so RMSO, that will exit standout mode. So what we can assume now is that end standout mode is ending standout mode. Now what is this SGR0 doing? So if we look for that one, SGR0, go backwards, that will turn off all attributes. So what end standout mode is doing is it's ending standout mode and then clearing any text effects that we might have enabled. So as we can see in here, we are setting the text to bold. 
but leaving standup mode doesn't actually remove the bold text. We also have to use something else to end the bold text. Okay, that's kind of cool. So this start underline, we have SMUL. So we can probably assume what this one does, but let's just have a look instead. So SMUL will begin underline mode. Okay, so that makes, that makes perfect sense. So start underline is starting the underline mode, setting the text to bold, and then also setting the foreground color of the text to red. So this isn't all the stuff that you can actually do. There's actually a ton of other stuff you can do. Let's say, look at italics. I, I don't believe it has an S on the end, italic. There we go. So RRTM will end italic mode. That's not too important though. What we want is enter italic mode. So we want SITM. Okay, so we can actually chain these together. So we don't need to just have, say, only bold or only underlined. We can say, do something like T put SITM and T put SMUL. So this text here will be for standout mode, will be bold, it'll be italicized and it'll be underlined. And also it'll have yellow foreground text and blue background text. So I run that and as we can see, that looks absolutely hideous now. So it's underlined, you might not be able to see the underline too well. Maybe here you can see it a bit better. It is italicized and it is also bold. So that actually gives you a pretty, pretty good example of what you can do. You don't have to just use one or the other. You can use as many as you want. Now let's have a look at some of the other things that I know are in here. So another one that I think is pretty cool is reverse. So basically reverse will actually switch the foreground and the background colors. So if we just drop one of the background colors, so let's just drop the blue for example, and just keep it as the foreground color being yellow. Okay, so if we do say T put and then if we look at the cap name, the cap name was rev. So if we do T put rev, and then add a colon or add a semicolon, save this, open up another man page. Now the foreground color has been set to my background color, which in my case is black. And then the background color of the text has been set to yellow. So as I said before, standout mode isn't just for this line down the bottom here. It's also for anything you search for. So if we search for D menu, then that'll actually do it to all of this stuff. So that actually might be something you wanna do just so it's a bit easy to see what you've searched for. That's gonna be up to you whether you think that looks good or not though. So another one I saw was subscript. Now I don't know if this is gonna work properly and it's gonna very much depend on your terminal and your font. Some terminals don't handle some of this stuff properly. Some fonts also don't handle stuff properly. So. If it doesn't work, you might have to look at some fixes online or maybe just use a different terminal. So enter subscript mode. Okay, let's enter subscript, enter superscript. So S, S, U, B, M. Okay, let's try that one. S, S, U, B, M. I actually don't know if this is even gonna work in ST. I assume it's going to, but I've got no idea. That didn't work, okay. Yeah, as I said, some of the stuff isn't gonna work. Some of the stuff is gonna work. It might be a problem with my font as well. Maybe my font just doesn't support going subscript and superscript, or it might be that standout mode doesn't support going into those forms or the man page doesn't properly comprehend what that actually means. So yeah, basically I'm not gonna go through all of this documentation. There is hundreds and hundreds of lines. And some of this stuff isn't actually related to outputting text. Like there's some stuff in here about like, if we go delete, this will enter delete mode, or we can delete a line, or we can delete a character. Some of this stuff doesn't really make sense for outputting. It's more for printers and for terminals. So look in here for stuff that you think will actually look good, or, in, or look in here for stuff that you think might actually make sense for applying to text and maybe you'll find a set that actually looks good. Maybe you won't, I don't know, that's gonna be up to you. If you wanna use my actual color set, I've got that on my GitHub. So feel free to use that and then feel free to play around with it however you like. Cause this is how I typically like to run my man pages. It's green, red, nothing too special. I've got a yellow tagline. Maybe I'll add reverse to the searches or for the, the standout because that'll make it a little bit easier to see. Obviously it being yellow isn't difficult to see or anything, but maybe it'd be a nice addition. I'm not really sure. I feel like I've gone over pretty much everything I wanted to go over in this video. I've given a pretty good rundown, at least I think, of what this stuff does. So you can play around with this to your heart's content and 
make it look exactly like you want it to look. So, if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below, let me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm now aiming for 10,000 subs and any help would be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in, so go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've got all of my social links, so if you want to chat with me on Discord or you want to see my Telegram or anything like that, go check that out. I've also got all of my support links, so if you'd like to support the channel, then feel free to go to my Patreon or any of the other links down there. Obviously though, if you don't feel like supporting, you don't have to. And lastly, I've got all of my alternate video platforms, so if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube, go check that out. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.